from that vengeance aura. Again, it's even it leads even more into the four protect one style, just having that Vlad's aura as well, once you've eventually got that and the Morphly online as well. So yeah, I really wouldn't hate to see that either. I just saw it now as well, like they have two saves versus Chrono. Yep. Uh, that's just enough said. I, I it's just, just a very that was an instant venge pick too. So which is, is crazy in itself. I wonder if they would have gone for it even if there was a different hero on on IG Vitality, if it was a, a different carry, but I I still have question marks around the mid venge, but I do prefer the die draft. I do as well. Of course, it can be very different if IG Vitality crush lanes and look to get really aggressive, but I'm interested to see what the item build from UQ is. Maybe they're just going to feel confident saying, hey, we've got three legit cores and they're going to have one, you know, three greater than one. We got this, but uh, I don't know. I really just have a lot of faith in the Erica Morphling even when he was gone by Poyoyo, one of his best heroes. Yes. And it was indeed. He's able to highlight how incredible of a morph playing player he is in the previous game. You're mentioning you feel like this is a lineup where it's kind of full protect one that they should be able to enable him, which makes it even scarier because it is, again, a very good morphling game. So let us see what we have in store for us. Interesting. Echo starts with the Wave of Terror. So, I mean, I guess it does it's like five. Groups. Yeah, I was, I was just, that's what I was looking at. Magic Missile does 90 damage. Wave of Terror does 85. So, uh, very, very similar in damage to be able to secure range creeps. Also against a Void Spirit brings him down to zero armor. So your right clicks are actually even more impactful. Veg, a universal hero. Can't discount that. Ish, oh, God. I honestly hope Echoes is onto something. I really hope this Venge actually has a good game because we have not seen this hero in a very long time and we all know Universal Hero is a dumb strong right now. So uh, I must say I do hope it kind of plays well. But you just have a look at the, the item build that he's going for, right? Maxing out the stats early on, early bracer, treads, pretty natural stuff. But, you know, again, for a core uh, Universal Venge, feel even better and Aghanim Scepter mm. even just that it's going to feel very logical and you're not even like nerfing your own progression in terms of right click damage if you end up picking it up just so I, much stats I do wonder how active the venture is going to get because we've spoken a lot recently about how we feel like mid laners need to be the uh, proactive ones and you have kind of the your, your carry is always that wing condition at the moment so I do wonder when Echoes is going to consider about making plays on the side lanes or if it really is just a game for, for only him? Uh, I think Echoes needs to probably get like level 12 Aghanim Scepter and then he's going to feel confident to be able to join the rest of the team. You know, it's... It, when it was played as a position uh, three, it was a similar sort of thing as normal. It has to be a little bit careful here. Should probably die. Bit too late for being careful now, it looks like. Except over... Stepped over the boundary and IG Vitality will be able to penalize him for that. So first blood's going to be picked off for Ukyo. But yeah, like it's it's very much a play selfishly so that you can play selflessly uh, later on. And you're going to have the Beastmaster again. He already does have that Helm of the Dominator queued up for himself. Uh, Sorry. it will be fine. Resonant Pulse. Uh, Normal End isn't going to be able to refill the bottle though, but he's going to be satisfied enough just making sure the Butterfly Effect doesn't get that uh, Water Rune refill. Uh, his lane's pretty much, I don't want to say over, but his next minute is very difficult now. He kind of needs a support to die in the side lane to refill. Maybe you go get the bounty, but they'll probably even take that away. So he could consider about getting this next Crete wave and going base, but that, that's a huge rotation just to take the water rune away from the void. Yep. If the supports are completely healthy, they really don't want to be dying. So we'll see what normal end ends up doing. Hopefully he's able to force them back a little bit here on the Faceless Void and yoink away that Bounty Rune, but might be Ponyo that ends up taking it as well. Not sure if he really wants to do this. He will get the D Ward off, though. Or he I... takes it. I don't know. I asked in the draft, like, how you feel about when Ranger yeah. 5. <sighs> Very close. I think he missed up the high ground as well. Can you kind of elaborate a little bit more on why you prefer Wind Ranger 4 over Wind Ranger 5? 
I think you just need to have a little bit more kill threat. You know, like uh, Wind Ranger is one of those heroes that thrives with not a lot of net worth, and uh, I well, you need you need a tiny bit, excuse me. So. I think just as that position five off the back of the smokes, the wards that you need to be buying up, you don't allow yourself to get into like a, just a couple of those value items. You can see she's a universal hero, so she's just going into the bracer, providing a little bit of that extra regen, meaning that you know you might not need to go tranquils, for example. You could just look to play off of brown boots instead. Uh, but it, it just means that you need to skirt that line of being uh, selfless, but also Omnibane? still contributing. They might just get return kill. Echoes. <laughs> Fraser delivered. She has plenty of stats, so shrugs off that attempt from the supports. Meanwhile, does free up top lane, so Marblu might be vulnerable as well. They're not going to be able to get that kill. Back to mid we go, though, as Butterfly Effect is getting chased down, snags up the water rune, and they will not continue to put some pressure on. Normal lane is going to be an absolute pest, though. We do see though, in game one as well, wasn't he? Yes, that he was. That he was indeed. Uh, we do see off that one stolen water and it, at the two minute mark. Like, take a look at the last. It's twenty five and ten compared yep. to the seventeen and three. So that is just a huge decision to to rotate as a support at that stage. Uh, it's made this lane very difficult. That's a again, second like, TP. Sorry, man. They that is another support that just TP'd mid to refill the bottle. That's crazy. <laughs> It is, and I'm not sure how great I feel about the, this purchase. I was about to say that you could probably look to not get the boots for this veg lane, just because you're not really going to be looking to make a lot of these rotations, right? Universal Hero, just buy out the Belt of Strength, buy out the Gloves of Haste, so you harass out this uh, this Void Spirit even further. But uh, you know what? Maybe it was just the, the quick buy, sending on through and force a habit. If these lanes are going incredibly well. You see, Marblue with all the emphasis they needed to put on the, the Void Spirit to be able to make his past couple of minutes bearable. They've left the Mag might solo. Be in trouble. And he will indeed. Echoes a normal end. Oh, big wand. Means he'll get the blast off. Oh, also, okay. be able to secure with a kill. Normal end gets it. Sure, he'll be asking normal end to just stick around at this uh, bounty route. Make sure that uh, he doesn't get that one over for free. They've still got the bounty in three minutes, by the way. The, Hara might look to yoink away, but well, you know what? <laughs> At least Butterfly Effect sees the funny side of things. Hara might be telling him that he's got those to be able to play around with, but no, they're just going to have another TP from Ponyo to be able to get that. Oh, they didn't actually get the refill. Oh, they messed it up. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, do you odds on Echo's going swap at six? He's got the skill level. What do we think? Uh, don't know if he needs to. Might just look to get like more points into the stuff that's going to be able to harass him out. A Blaine, Marblue. Some danger. Erica knows no fear with the wave form over the top. It's a kill onto the Magnus being able to slow down his dame. And meanwhile, bottom lane, that's not going to continue to get easier because Echoes, he's rotating with the haste rune. Can they get the vision before the jump away? They will be able to thanks to the wave of terror. They won't be able to chase down Ponyo, but that's going to get Shining closer to the Helm Dom. Like we were saying, Denok, this Helm Dom versus the Faceless Void. This might be a game where the map shrinks at a very rapid rate. Makes sense that they're going the Midas because of this. You know, of course, to be able to uh, get rid of the Helm Dom creep immediately. But if you've got less space on the map to be able to play around with, Midas really is that most efficient item to be able to have. You know, you're guaranteeing your net worth off of every single use out of it. Battle Fury is where you just want to hit as many creeps as possible. But if there just isn't space to be able to do that, then Midas probably the best tool that you've got at your disposal. Uh, my big issue is that... I'm assuming they were expecting the lanes to go a lot better than this. I know it's only a 1k net worth lead, but again, this Morphling is just going to get to this period where he's just going to fall completely out of control with all of the buffs that he's going to have to be able to play around with. And he's at the stage where he can start to play solo on the Morphling. Levels is really the big thing for him. Almost got treads completed, so... See, why, 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 why is maybe I, I said an extra why there, but he's able to start playing with Echoes, Butterfly Effect. As she's both ultimate charges. <laughs> Secure the Arcane. I'll take any sort of scraps at this point. <laughs> Just let me have a lane. Oh, 
Uh, blue, they looks like they might be able to get the Magnus as well. It's just both supports, but even Eric is going to consider about moving over as well. I don't know how that Shaq would latch on the Hara. Norman should be able to banish himself to protect. Doesn't get it off Hara's damage. Wasn't able to estimate how much it was actually going to be from the Dark Willow, so it is a one for one. But of course, happy with that exchange. Your carry Morphling gets a kill. You also shut down Marblue once again. I mean, again, you're, you're happy for a, a support for core trade. Means that you're spending more time in the grave. Means that you're not putting any pressure onto the tower. Means that the Morphling is going to continue to have more areas of the play, the map to be able to play around with. And again, they're closing in on that Helm of the Dominator, just about 200 gold away. It's going to be around that 10-minute uh, that timing as well, so... Ooh, Echo. All right, gets, finally gets something taken away from him, but it's going to take some fancy footwork. They're actually committing. They've got the Chrono with the ready. Swap over the right side. He's got some damage reduction thanks to the ultimate, but is that going to be enough to keep Echoes alive? Let's secure with the kill. Shining's still going to turn it around off the back of the roll. Will be a two for one to favor them, but with so many creeps from Shining, it's going to mean the supports get sunk down. Oh. He'll be able to get some distance away, but the banishment from Normal End means that Erica should be able to get involved in this skirmish we've got going on. But won't be able to secure the kill into the Void Spirit, so it has to go for Ponyo instead. So in the end, it will be a three for three. Does look like Butterfly Fex going to be able to secure the power rune, but bottom tower will still go down now. It will, and oh, well, he's got that Helm of the Dominator as well, so plenty of uh, damage to be able to go into this one. Uh, they got a mm. nice little shackle there. Um, they just got to try and bring as much attention towards this mid lane, make sure they're not able to protect that tower, and looks like they'll be able to after taking it, just taking the Twin Gate up towards the top side. That's why the Shadow Demon is TPing up onto the outpost. It's really just about protecting as much of this area of the map as you can. I know the Cronus who was used as well, so feeling pretty confident just to be able to throw out that disruption, but they still get the tower. All right. A little bit slow with some of the movements there from uh, the last arc. So the game state not looking too bad. Butterfly effect, high net worth than the Ventral Spirit, even after a bit of a rougher lane. So he's going to be working on the Echo Saber. You've got Ukyo back into the jungle, closing on his Midas. It looks like Marblue's actually going to go play down bottom as well. So, away from the team, isolated, but of course he's going to be able to farm a whole lot inside the jungles. Wind Ranger gets the wind run away. Shining, though, with a wraparound. Hara's going to go down to the creeps. So, Shining can use his spells under butterfly effect if required, but have some difficulty with keeping up with the voids. But that kill might lead them into the objective mid lane, though. They got plenty of creeps to be able to play around with. And Really, no one that can uh, look to defend unless that Chronosphere is available. It's going to be a little bit of time until it is up again. So, see if they opt to make something happen with Butterfly Effect. But again, they know that these Shackle Shots from YYYY have been on point. They've still got that Primal Roar available. That's just another objective claimed. Lads now coming out for Shining. Both good for the sustain, good for the push, good for the mana regeneration. And of course, eventually going to be buffing up this Morphling too. Oh, does he take it? He does, okay. I was going to say, does Morphling want the DD or not? Of course, he's got some farm to be able to continue to get. Push Sax inside the jungle. But again... So, Radiant, with this lineup, I mean, Mag Void plays a very slow game. We spoke a lot how we both feel like Morphling late game is probably going to be the biggest win condition. So what are Radiant looking for is they should be able to get a kill into the Wind Ranger. Looks like that would be the case. No rotations coming out. What do we feel like is the ultimate timing for IG Vitality? I'm wondering if it even is a timing. Like, is it going to reach the point where they just want it to get as late as possible? And, you know, even if a Faceless Void is able to get all of this farm, like, are they going to be able to go over what the Morphling is able to contribute, right? Like, it's it's still an amazing Morphling game, but you get caught out, Agi shifted inside of a Chronosphere, you can die, right? So maybe it's just going to be taking a successful team fight, denying away an Aegis so that you're really enabling that Chronosphere, enabling that RP as much as possible, and then looking to fight into them. But, I mean, it's, it's going to need to be as late as possible. It really you... feels like they're playing reactively. I mean, this is an early Blink Dagger that Mag is working towards. 
In regards to the chrono, I wonder when Eric is going to consider about the Ag Shard, because you can shift through chrono with that, so... Um, I don't... I, I'm not quite sure on what the build is for the Morph thing when you go down that route. Well, especially yeah, against the face save as well. That's true. I mean, yep, that, that's even true. So he might not even need it, right? You, you've got, like you just said, double save. Uh, Ags is, can still being worked on for Echoes, and he's doing a pretty decent job to be able to find his farm. But we haven't seen him involved in a lot of the rotations recently. So this is something you mentioned. Like he, he was pretty active early game. I was quite surprised, but that was really off the back of just all the power runs going his way. And now that the game pace is kind of slowed down, he's like, okay, I need my own time to farm. So once he gets that scepter, those saves inside the fights is going to be even easier. And now they've got the Helm of the Overlord as well. This is a pretty early timing, 14 and a half minutes. The fact that they've been able to take two Tier 1 towers already, it, it involved a bunch of the team being around. But again, like th this was pretty much all on the back of Shining on his Beastmaster. So if you're able to just take those away, opens up more of the map for you to be able to farm, needs a little bit less pressure for the, uh, the Vengeful Spirit to be able to get into that greedier item with the Aghanim Scepter. She's almost, uh, she's getting close to that level 12 as well, right? So that's really the thing that I'm looking to see them play around most. As they're trying to get a quick pick on Tahara, was just a little bit short on the range for the Demonic Purge. So it looks like she'll be able to get away. What are your thoughts on this Diffusal Blade from Ukiah? Ah, uh, Really going Diffusal? Is it going to come yeah. out? Oh. Yeah, it's coming out. Ah. So, at least what I make of it is that it's just, again, we've spoken recently about the cost effectiveness and damage, and I think it, he just feels like he's forced to fight super early on. I guess, but if you were forced to fight super early on, do you really want to go a faceless void into a morphling, you know? Like, the, this comes back to the draft for mine. So, mm. I don't know, it feels like they're kind of in two minds as to how they want to take this one. Oh, awkward time walk in. They've got yeah. plenty of time to respond. Memo over to the left side. Shadow Realm was there as well before the roar. I don't know how that worked. They want to try and go for the Ancient Thunder Hide. Shackle's going to prove to be a bit of an issue. Memo is going to be killed off over the left side. Yuko finds a pretty good chrono, but where's the damage follow-up? He's going to try and target normal at the moment. They've got the jump in as well from Butterfly Effect with the RP there, but everyone else is in full retreat. They've used everything and they didn't even get anyone. Eric you can now look to clean up with a screw up in a couple of seconds. It'll be too long though. Ma Blue chased down close to the T1 tower. That might be Roshan as well. I mean, you know Krona has used RP. You've got this Helm of the Overlord and the Wave of Terra maxed out. And this could just be the Roshan now get all the outer towers. Should be pretty simple for that as well. I mean, yeah, that was a Chronosphere onto both saving supports. And like you said, they weren't even able to get a single one off the back of that. It's actually TPing away here. Looks like Wind Ranger is still wanting to protect as much of their map as possible. Should be able to do it as well. Just that one point of the wind run, still giving enough safety. <laughs> fancy speed movements, and yeah, you could just see, you know what? I'm in position five, but I'm making a lot of space for my team. Says why, 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 why? Why get his bracer build as well? Really not gimping him in terms of his damage, in terms of his survivability. Again. Not needing to go tranquils. Just the brown boots is enough for that base little bit of movement speed for the wind run to be able to uh, be maxed up on top of. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. What do you feel like is realistic for the last dark to be able to get off this ages? I said I think all out of towers. Maybe it's just two. Do you think that's realistic? Uh, two tier twos, are you saying, or just yes. two towers? Yeah. Two tier twos. I think you'd be very disappointed if you're not able to get at least this last tier one tower and one tier two tower, just because I think they're going to put a lot more emphasis onto particularly this top side of the map on um, on IG Vitality. You know, you need to maintain control over this ancient area. You need to make sure you've got a little bit of high ground to be able to defend because they've still got a Magnus to be able to play around with. They've still got a Techies that they want to be able to safely set up some proximity mines to be able to scout out all of these smokes. And I feel like if you give away too many of these towers, I mean, that one just uh -oh. melted. You give away a lot of that potential. Ah, uh, so they're going high ground. <laughs> sure. Oh, that's right. I think they've got a Dragon Lance coming out as well for the Morphling, so not rushing into that Axe, but again, makes a lot of sense, right? You've got a Dark Willow that you're playing up against. She's only got the two points in the Shadow Realm at this point in time, but 
it eventually. Will she max it out? I hope she doesn't, just because that is attack. gonna be so key for Erica. You just need to be real creative here. A butterfly effect. Bottom Korea. lane. Fukio? What's going on between the two? Okay. They now know the Morphling's not mid. Stab. This is pretty awkward of a fight for Daiwa. Echo's going to be started, nice up, but he's got the Scepter. Echo's doesn't mind if he gets killed off the start. Although isolating Shining is really important for IG Vitality. They're going to try and target down the Beastmaster with all the spells. RP used as well. Any defensive? There we go. Banishment from Normal End's going to be able to keep him alive. Chrono as well from Ukyo. Morphling starting to rotate they They're going to be quick. We're getting the kills because now with Erika here, he's looking to find some revenge inside the river. Ukyo and Marblu combination together. Finds another one, and the retreat's been caught, but can they get away with Marblue? Score over the remnants of the T1 Tau. Normal end. Banishment is still on cooldown, and... Wait, Butterfly, he actually wants to jump in. Sees a freebie with Normal end. Ponyo as well provides the damage. Beautiful read from IG Vitality. They see that Erica showed bottom, and instantly they go for that fight mid. I mean, that's either they basically gave him that on a silver platter, right? Your Aegis carry, you're going away from the rest of the team after they're trying to sweep across the map and take away a lot of these outer towers, a lot of the space for IG Vitality to be able to play around. And, well, I thought Butterfly Effect played that one pretty well. He still hasn't died this entire game and dishing out the most damage in that team fight as well. Even an arcane route to be able to play around with on this top side of the map. Oh. I don't know. How has he got no kills, though? Zero, zero, and five? Butterfly effect? Oh, I'll put the third point into Shadow Realm. Not a fan. Really can't afford it, to just potentially give this one over to a Morphling. Do you think that's the best target this game? I think so. I mean, you've got the Dragon Lance for range, you've got a Beastmaster for the attack speed, everyone will die. You like can even just have, well. if, if you're really on point with the uh, the Shadow Realm, if you're morphed, you know, Chrono comes in, just go into the Shadow Realm. You don't even need the save coming through from your supports. Do they want to stick around? 50 seconds on this uh, Aegis, so you just look to put Erica onto the front line. It's still 30 seconds away from the Chronosphere being up, and well, hopefully, for their sake, they can see this. I think that's a big cooldown. We Marblu as well. Might be able to go with the banishment now used, but his Echo is really your target. He's going to show himself. Ooh, oh, the swap to start, and now the turnaround with the roar as well. Terrorize a little bit too late. That caught me off guard. Wasn't expecting Echoes to go for that swap, and maybe it caught Marlu off guard as well. It's now a full set of barracks going to be claimed bottom, and they'll get on out without a further fight. Miku was at least able to take the tier two top, but probably not the trade that you're wanting at this stage of the game. Somehow it's still only a 2k net worth lead. It's off the back of him just being uber greedy up on this top side of the map. Trying to be, I mean, it's not worth dropping Chronosphere for a win ranger though. This is the thing that YYYY has done so well. Just being able to play around this one. I'm wondering if maybe they just opt to send a Hawk up towards the top area of the map just to see if they could spot out wherever Ukyo is farming. Because they've got solid enough pick off for him. Still going to be a little mm. bit of time until he... Has he got Lincoln's coming out to him now? Oh, he actually went into the, the Ag Shard for himself. So maybe just wanting to bait out a few spells really quickly. So who got the Ag Shard? Uh, Void's got a Q and probably going to go into it. So I was watching uh, the Winter Engine miss four free CS with no one contesting. Mr. Benacreep, Mr. Catapult as well. So... <laughs> You see Good a morphling see with uh, Ags as well at 22 and a half minutes. Oh, yeah. Wow. So let's see. Shadow Realms maxed out. And the Hawk as well for the vision. A I mean, don't get me wrong. Ukyo is still a good target for it, but the fact that you've got two great ones is yeah. pretty ideal. I mean, even just the Void Spirit, right? You're going to have the, uh, the Silence coming through from the true, uh, Stealing true. Over the Resonant Pulse. A lot of value this game. They're going to try and smoke. Does get broken. Instant swap from Echoes into the war as well. They're going to be able to blow him up before the response is Marblue. He's too late. He's still going to be able to...
able to skew two members into the RP with Butterfly Effect in the middle. It's a lot of damage. But now they've got the Venge Illusion to be cautious of as once again the swap from Echoes puts Ponyo into a compromised position. And Erika knows no fear. Leaping over the top, he sees three kills and he should be able to find it as well. No oh, but oh, Wait, hang on. Erika? Erika? Oh my god. Just gets up by the skin of his teeth. Almost went too far. It means normal end will end up dying, but now maybe they can't get this tower. Really playing on the edge there, just looking to try and take out anything that they can. We'll settle just for that Sainted Torment, for the plus 250, but that's a couple of times now that uh, Eric has just gone a little bit too deep or been a little bit off with his play. He actually ended up walking into a Bramble as well after the uh, the pickoff of the Faceless Void, so wasn't actually able to follow up when that RP came through and they were able to pick off the Venge for the first time, so... That little thing's not quite going their way, but again, he's just got a uh, the Dragon Lance recompleted. He's up to level 16 now, so all stats uh, maxed out. Oh, sorry, all abilities maxed out. Looking to go into the Satanic this time around. This is the good game for the Satanic. Not into the Medusa, not going to have any of that, uh, that damage blocked up by any sort of pesky mana shield or anything like that. Going to get full value out of it. I wonder if this is going to be another combo we see in some of the further fights now. That swap instantly into the raw. I'm going to call it the Void off guard. There was definitely great communication there that that was going to be the the game plan for the last arc inside that fight. So, of course, if you do go for that play and then overcommit on Ukyo, it could set up for a multi-man RP and then that could spell disaster for last arc. So that is the one thing that Radiant are playing with. It's a crap load of team fight. So with a Wombo combo, but it's just, can they execute? And you don't have the vision advantage, so it will be that much more difficult to do so. I'm really struggling to find a way that they're going to be able to take this one. The Roche is spotting up towards the top side, and IG Vitality have set up their vision beforehand, in addition to a proximity mine. Hara won't scout it out, but if they check the pit, you will see that it's come up and looks like they'll be able to do that. Although rotations are coming through from the last arc all at once. Are they going to be able to have the damage to do it? I still think they need to play reactively around all of these uh, mines. You know, if they can potentially get a blink skewer back into them, that's going to be such a key way to be able to start out this fight, especially if it's on to the Beastmaster. They're going to know. They're using the boar. Send them in. Get the Hawk now for vision. They scout out Summon again. They see it though. I just got to keep... Beastmaster's got boar available. He needs to send that into the mines. Just take away all of their vision that they have to be able to play around with. Oh, Marblu. It's a good start. It's just a Dara five. Playing around their ward on the high ground. Echoes gets a swap back once again into the raw. They're going to target Marblu and instantly blow him up. Can they take him? Continue with the fight from IG Vitality as Ukyo gets a pretty good chrono onto two. Both supports should be killed off. He's lacking the damage now. Ukyo's still going to be able to get the time walk out defensively, but Eric is on the prowl when it's trying close to distance. He's time dilated. Some stuns, but he doesn't have a way out as Eric has got plenty of damage to bash as well from himself thanks to the scepter. Does look like Dark Willow is going to be able to escape. I don't know how that one worked. Did, did, What's that? Huh? The Willow. Yeah, does he not bash on Time Walk? Can you not do that if you can't right-click them? I don't know what happened. But uh, anyway, uh, the the basically what happened there was uh, Morphling ended up giving the Faceless Void a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> it morphs into him, gives him the, uh, the time dilation. Even though he got a good first time walk-off, means that he wasn't having the cooldown. It was frozen in time and space. And, well, this is going to be second Roshan off of losing just a Windranger. You know, again, this really isn't that big of a hero commitment to be able to uh, to take that second Roshar down. They take down the Chronosphere as well. They know that's not available, so really shouldn't be anything stopping them from being able to go in onto this high ground. And, well, look at that. They've even got a DD on the bottom side of the river if uh, Echoes is able to quickly scout that one out. But he's just more keen about joining the rest of the team, making sure that they can make the most out of this Chrono being on cooldown. Still has gone into the willow, just because again, it's such a such a good thing to be able to just take away the voids. Well, they'd have to be a little careful. They're even going to be able to claim the wisdom rune as well off the back of this. So maybe Erica just saying, you know what, I want my level 18. We'll be able to grab it off the back of that wisdom. 
He's very tough. Can't be able to make the full push though. Well, they're fighting, Mar Blue. That's a good start onto Normal M. The Shadow Demon's been a bit of a pest in these recent fights. But the swap nice defense of the Echoes gets him out. No way. Butterfly Effect still will be able to secure the kill, but it looks like it breaks the formation as Erica once again is just going to be able to clean up another fight where the Morphling goes completely uncontested. They're even looking for Butterfly Effect as well, but they don't care. Objectives is the only thing on their mind. Ooh, Lickens. Still haven't used the... Uh, actually, no, never mind. He is still into the Faceless Void. But this is the last glyph that they're probably going to have for this entire game. So, unless Marblu gets the perfect skewer back, he's still got the RP available to be able to make plays around with. Might be like an Ogre Seal Totem forward into the Blink, into the Harpoon back, because they've still got that Beastmaster Hawk vision to be able to play around with. One thing is, like, Dark Willow's back up. Faceless Void has the Chronosphere available. Might be able to get a quick kill for free, but not wanting to overcommit here, especially with Normal End just respawning. It's all the way back in base. Got to get the Wisdom Root for his team. Not quite enough to bring YYY up to level 15. The, uh, the level 15 talent on the Wind Ranger is actually pretty huge in terms of the damage reduction off of it. You know, it I think it, like, effectively, if you're the fifth target hit, it adds, like, 400 damage to it or something crazy like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what they can do with this Observe what outside the base throw on IG Vitality. Might be able to scout out a support. Well, never mind, that should get d watered pretty shortly with the sentry drop down. So, very nicely done from YYY. The, the thing is, Marbley just has to be perfect, right? He doesn't have a buyback to be able to be, play around, and he still needs to be the one to make the initiation happen, so all eyes have to be on him. Someone needs to be able to do. make chaos happen for him, though. He can't just walk in. He doesn't have the freedom to do that. You're 10k behind into an Aegis. He's going to start. Onto the morph they go. But the response is there with the waveform. There was no follow-up at the moment. But the banishment on cooldown, it might be an opening for Ukyo. See how hesitant they are, though, going to this Aegis target. Once again, Marblu's going to attempt it. Can they get the first life? Ukyo jumps to the back line, doesn't see an opening for the Chrono. Ace is just gone. Oh. Yeah, all the while, the Ancient Black Dragon's just doing the work. Now they're just going to back off. No Satanic for, uh, for Erica. But still with that Morbid Mask, if he wants to, and just start right clicking into a creep a few times. Oh, they see Uku out of the base. And they got the Watcher Vision as well. No, oh, Uku, can't afford not to like be this. here, my guy. Ooh. This oh, gets a time walk. Oh, He's sure. just stuck, though. What do you do? What, like, how do you get out of this one, brother? The team's starting to run on over, but they're going to be too late. Oh, That's and he doesn't have a buyback. Not even close either. Bounty runes aren't going to save you. I mean, if Marblu had a hard task before, it's going to be even more so now off the back of this. Still 50 seconds. I feel like Erica's going to play even more ballsy here. Oh, what a swamp. Oh, now Die back. instantly just tears him apart. Oh, no, no, no. All right, Make so the plus gym. side is... Eric can, can now morph into the Dark Willow. Oh, no, he can't. The game's just going to be called. Uh, is there a plus side? I didn't say for oh. who. Yeah, that's true. You didn't. You didn't. I thought you meant for you. I tell you. I'm like, oh, I don't know. There's going to be some coping.